Welcome everybody to uh where is it? My awards of games and inheritance. Your awards of games and me. Going for a little and knuckles there. I I almost went the uh featuring Dante from Devil May Cry, but I was like, inheritance from what? Like I can't do the full <laughs> Inheritance from Devil May Cry. Did you not did you not see me in Devil May Cry? Uh sorry, I only played the first one. Ah. But uh I need to play the, the seventh one. Uh yeah, maybe eventually. Maybe. I'd have to get through two and that sounds awful. Uh but hey there Dark Data. Hey there Shady. Uh welcome. We are uh we're gonna probably probably kinda move at a decent pace because we have uh a lot of awards to cover. But I have a lot of games that I wanted to shout out. I think it was a lot of things I enjoyed this past year. Uh so let's just get right into it. Uh first is let me see if this will let me okay. Best action and or adventure game of 2023. Uh, I, I, there was enough for me to do separate action games and adventure games and action adventure games. So just all one category. Uh, so the first one is Cereza and the Lost Demon. I feel like it didn't get a lot of attention, uh, but I got that around my birthday and yeah, it was pretty fun. Second one. Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, that's almost a given to be in this category. Like, regardless of my mixed feelings on it all, like, it was one of the biggest action adventure games of the year. And it's Zelda. Uh, third would be Metroid Prime Remastered. Uh, it may be a remaster, but it's still, it is an adventure game. It's a first person adventure game. Uh, it kind of just came out of nowhere. Uh, not advertising games. Hey there, Son. Oh. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I th- thought it was worth a nomination. And finally, Oxen Free 2. It's a bit more of a, uh, a, a bit more of a, a left field kind of game. Like, you wouldn't think of Oxen Free as like an adventure game, but it is an adventure game. And uh, it's also an indie game, so it's kind of hard to stand up against the others. But it was a standout game that I did enjoy my time with. Uh, and yeah, so the winner, though, of the action adventure is a dramatic drum roll. Wow. I don't know what you did, but I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> oh, you can't hear me? Uh, no, I was try- I, I was trying to wait until. Uh, can you hear me now? You, I found a good spot in you okay, talking. You, you can't hear me now. Uh, how about now? Yes, I can hear you now. I didn't do anything. It looks like it looks like uh, guest star decided to just mute me because now I see the mute symbols on. So cool. <laughs> Iconic. Uh, but yeah, the winner of. Best action adventure game. If Close to... Metroid Prime Remastered. Hey there, Shell. You did join just in time. Uh yeah. This probably came out of left field. But again, it was it was a remaster. It was a. Uh, oh, I actually have. Make sure it plays. Uh, turn the volume up a little. It was a remaster. It uh, kind of came out of left field. They announced it in a direct, and they were just like, "It's out now." But in a month, if you want physical, I got the physical. Uh, I was really hyped when we got this. Uh, uh what else was nominated? Uh, shall it was uh, Oxen Free Two, Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. And uh, Cereza, uh, the Bayonetta Origins. But yeah, Metroid Prime Remastered, it was honestly, 
this was a great game when it first came out. They made it really just shine in this, and it was great re-exploring uh, Talon 4. I'm really looking forward to Prime, Prime 4 when that comes. Uh, but yeah, I only have glowing praise for this. If you haven't played Metroid Prime, this is the definitive way to play Metroid Prime. And I really hope they do the same with 2 and 3 because honestly, the series just gets better for me. So... Well, oh, like a minute of song and there was just some amb ambient effects, but that's Metroid Prime. <laughs> I, and I don't... Uh, yeah, you... I don't know if I can't hear the music, but like I, I'm. I you couldn't hear. Oh, about. you couldn't hear the music. It's fine. Like I'm not upset about it. I'm just in case you know. Uh, v is putting music on. Is it just too quiet for you, or? I can't hear it at all. Uh, don't are change you... anything on my end? Uh, thank you for the uh, thank you for the gift sub, Clark, to uh, Gormulant. Uh, very kind of you. Welcome, Clark. Uh, are you focused on the uh, the win window of her stream? Yeah, it's uh, I'm at 200. Oh, you're right. It was for some reason it was just very quiet, or maybe we both did something at the exact same time because now it's very loud. I did nothing, but okay. <laughs> That's so bizarre. Okay, well, uh, okay, so we're gonna move on to the next category. It'll get a little smoother as we go. Action Free Two is the only one you didn't play those. I still recommend it, shall it was Action Free Two was great, but you got to play the first one because it's very story based. Uh, okay, so next is best platforming game of twenty twenty three. Uh, actually, keep this up. Uh, so. Out of the games that I nominated, first was Disney's Illusion Island. Uh, I was kind of hyped when I first heard about this. I liked a lot of the older Disney like platforming games, making stuff. So I had some kind of high hopes, and it kind of gave me some uh, Raymond Legends kind of vibes. Uh, second is Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Once again, we're in with a uh, remaster. We had a lot of those this year. Uh, and honestly, Return to Dreamland was never one of my favorite Kirby games. It was fine. But I really came to appreciate it more in Deluxe. It added a lot of polish, a lot of some new stuff. It just made the game feel fresh. And uh, yeah, I only wish it had online play. And I only have a third nomination here because I only really put notable time into three platformers this year. And that is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, yeah, I mean, what is there to say about Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Everybody knows it was like it was nominated for a Game Award. It was talked about a lot. And uh, I played it with Inheritance and our other friend Shady, as well as Disney Illusion Island. We, we played both of those together. So, uh, as for the actual winner, come on. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Let me, I'll actually start the music first. Oops. No. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, it was the freshest Mario game I've played since before New Super Mario Bros. Really, pretty much since I was introduced to the series in Super Mario World. Like, uh, New Super Mario Bros. kind of felt samey, and it didn't have... Oh, I just realized my overlay is actually obscuring the game. Uh, a lot of the games we had gotten for a while of the, uh... Of the uh, Mario 2D games, they've just kind of felt similar, and they haven't felt like they had a lot of charm. But this game kind of oozed charm and weirdness, and it had kind of the older Mario style of these really cool ideas you did for one level. <laughs> Which is kind of like, I'd like them to expand on that, 
But you know, this would be an amazing addition to the Mario Maker games, a Mario Wonder kind of theme, because there's just a lot of really cool stuff that they just scratch the surface of. Uh, Sonic Superstars never stood a chance. I unfortunately didn't play Sonic Superstars last year, so... But, uh, yeah. So, let me stop the music. And next category. Uh, it is Best RPG. This was a hard one. I had a pretty long list of RPGs I played this past year, and I had to parse it down to four. This is one of the hardest ones to narrow it down. Uh, first, Baldur's Gate 3. Would it, I mean, it won how many awards in, for in general already on official award shows? It's if you haven't played Baldur's Gate three, it was kind of a game changing RPG. I'm still playing it. Uh, it makes D and D kind of approachable for anybody in video game format. Uh, it has some amazing storytelling. Your choices matter pretty much everywhere. You have so much variation in build. Like, I'm not surprised that people replay this dozens of times in different ways. Uh, second is Persona 5 Tactica. Uh, I mean, what can I say? I got very into Persona this year, if anybody who knows me knows. It, yes, this year is when I kind of discovered it, and so it was a very hyped RPG for me just because I was getting a Persona game that nobody had played before. I was getting to join the launch. And uh, like all Persona 5 games, it, or Persona games, it uses a lot of style, but I won't talk too much about each one. Sea of Stars, uh, that was an indie game that honestly holds its own against like the big game, big games. I wish more people would play it. This is like Chrono Trigger, but like it's an indie game, but it's like that style of game. And it's kind of people just need to play it. It flew under the radar for a lot, but it did get kind of noticed. I think it got a nomination for the game award. Actually, I think it won indie game and which I kind of des probably deserves, but last is super Mario RPG. Again, a remake, but uh, it added a fair amount of content. It, uh, like, remaster isn't even the right word. It's because it added so much content, got a complete new graphics, complete new, like, music, like, all redone. Uh, it's, and uh, yeah, well, let's just get to the winner, though. Uh, so. Come on, close the folder. Close the folder. Sorry, my Dreamlabs being a little laggy. I mean, I just best RPG is. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Baldur's Gate Three, which is not really. The music's kind of. To turn it up a little. Uh, <laughs> Just when the trumpet hit. Yeah, in a minute it's probably gonna get really loud. I'll turn it back down. Uh, you know, it's not too loud. Let me just turn it a little. Uh, uh, I mean, Baldur's Gate Three well deserved it. It won the won the award or award, awards this year. It's it's an industry changing game, and like I said, it offers so much replayability, so much. Like, it's the type of game that I want more. I want it to go further, higher levels. Like, the level cap's like 12. I want it to go full 20. I want it, I want it to... I want expansions. And, like, this is when I, one of the picks I feel is, like, objectively the best game in its category of the year. Yeah, Shell, you do need to play uh, Sea of Stars. I highly recommend. Uh, I don't know if I recommend playing it before or after The Messenger, but I recommend playing both. But I think you played The Messenger already, so. Anyways. Uh, 
strat it but uh oops uh, oh you just saw it all <laughs> cool <laughs> uh best strategy game well blink and you miss it you might have seen them all but uh still advance wars reboot camp uh i've been waiting for that forever it and it's it's Advance Wars. It's a remake. It's pretty much just gra- new graphics and new like audio, but it's the same identical game. Nothing really new added, but all oh, identical two games. Still really good. Uh, Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, I mean, also that title is wrong. Oh no, <laughs> it oh, just, no. shouldn't say re- best remake. Uh, even though that first one was a remake. Uh, let's see. Did this title get right? Yeah, okay. Let's use that. So, uh, yeah, Fire Emblem Game, Engage, latest, uh, Fire Emblem game, which Fire Emblem really has gotten a lot more mainstream the past few games. And it kind of goes back to its roots a bit, but, uh, Yeah. And we're back with Persona 5 Tactica because it's a strategy RPG, so it's both. Fire Emblem is technically both also. And I've already made it clear all my thoughts, or a lot of basic thoughts on Tactica. All my thoughts would take hours. So. <laughs> and finally, Pikmin 4. Uh, the only real-time strategy game here, but uh, kind of a phenomenal one. It really is probably the best game in its series, and it's a game. This this was a hard choice because uh, Pikmin or was so solid. But let's just get to the uh, winner. Drum roll! Long drum roll. I you know I'm not closing the folder. You're taking too long. Uh. Let me pull the music up, though. Uh, I should have cut this image better. But Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Uh, Like I said, I was waiting a long time for this game. I mean, kind of, I was waiting for an Advanced Wars arrival for very long time and I was I never lost complete hope uh, especially when we were getting hits like Wargroove and stuff that showed there was an audience for it but I wasn't completely sure if we'd get it and I wasn't sure when we'd get it and then we got it announced and a couple years later a few years later a while later we got Shree Boot Camp and I wish it got more attention it was kind of a victim of a lot of a lot of uh, unfortunate events, but it's really solid. I recommend it to anybody who likes like just pure turn-based strategy games. Uh, but yeah. So let's move on to the next category, which is I'm going to close the folders anymore because this is just. Best puzzle game of 2023. Uh, first, Ghost Trick. Technically, our playthrough bled into 2024, but uh, <laughs> Inheritance Inside just got done with Ghost Trick. Uh, I had played it years back in the original release, uh, and this is another remaster, but it was a game I absolutely never thought I'd see again. Like, I thought there was zero chance that this would ever get a re-release of any format, and it got an HD remaster, and it uh, came out pretty good. Uh, yeah, Shell, it does feel like a new game. Uh, and then, because I, this is another category I didn't play many games of that, of that released this year, there's only one other nomination for Best Puzzle Game, and that is... Oh, image came after. Killer Frequency, another game that's kind of uh, not traditional in the genre you would think it's in, but Killer Frequency is definitely a puzzle game. 
uh, as you're thinking outside the box and how to like solve these uh, situations just by telling people to do the stuff. Uh, it was kind of a, a game I didn't even hear about until my friend Shady Gamer uh, actually it was like one of my best friends. I don't usually take requests, but he's one of my best friends and he was like, do you think you could do this for Halloween? It'd be a great game. And I was like, I, I looked at it. It didn't seem long. I was like, sure. So out of nowhere, I tried Killer Frequency. And, well, it's another puzzle game, so it makes that list. Uh, but which of the two is the winner? Let me uh, open the music. <laughs> Ghost Trick. I mean, I'm sorry. Killer Frequency was fun. It was it was a great game, but Ghost Trick is just a wild ride. Uh, as you can tell, Heritage really likes the song. It's it's his uh, one of his uh, or he's used, been using it for starting soon. <laughs> Screens, but uh, in general, I just highly recommend Ghost Trick. I don't want to say a lot about Ghost Trick because it's one of those games that's. Very heavy story and a lot you would say is spoilers, but it's a it's like a it's a puzzle visual novel game and it is really good. And unfortunately, this great bop has has to end. I know all good things have to, <laughs> but it's it, it's only twenty seconds from the end of it anyways because it's a short loop. Oh, I have uh, yeah, mine is like three hour extended compilation well i have them set to loop just in case but yeah. uh and now whoops best racing game there was only one nomination i only played one racing game that released this year uh i didn't mean to reveal it before the, or alongside the category but i did uh I turn up a little disney speedstorm I mean, even if it was the only, if there was other racing games, this probably still would have taken my pick. Speedstorm is uh, very solid. The only downside I could say about it is it is a uh, live service game. It does have kind of a, a gotcha like system, which does stink if you're trying, just want to play as a certain character. It can be a little grindy, but. The racing itself is some of the best racing I've played in a game. It's probably, it might make my top five racing games in terms of gameplay. Because it's it's very, the items all pretty much affect things pretty heavily. And there's a lot of character exclusive, or like class exclusive, there's classes. Uh, and it's a very aggressive game where you have, uh, wait, it's kind of like F-Zero in a way that you have a, you can attack people. Uh, but just the way it all comes together makes it less of a straightforward racing game than most. There's a lot of things you have to split second make decisions on. Whether you, uh, all items can be used in two different ways. Which way do you want to use the item? Do you want to save it? Uh, do you want to focus on uh, attacking somebody or try to give them space in case they attack you? There's so much on-the-fly decisions you got to make that I think really suit the racing genre well. And also, the music is all uh, interesting, like, dance trance remixes. This isn't a remix. I intentionally picked the uh, menu theme because most of it is remixes of the Disney music, and I don't want to chance <laughs> Disney music, even in a remix form, on yeah. here. But the music is very solid, so just trust me that they have some really bops, uh, really great bops that are just remixes and stuff like Bare Necessities and like I'll Make a Man Out of You. And, uh, yeah. So, next category, which actually has more than one nomination. Just kidding. It only has one nomination. <laughs> I honestly, I, I didn't say that as a joke. I, just, I didn't realize. Oh, it's another one. You got me in the first half, not gonna lie. 
Hey there, Mel Maple. Welcome. Yeah, you should do more Speedstorm. I kind of fell off a little after it, uh, after it went to the full release, unfortunately, but that's not due to anything with the game. It's because I had a lot of things I was juggling, and that's kind of a game you got to play a little daily. But yeah, best rhythm game. I only played one rhythm game that released this year, unfortunately, but it was a big one. Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy. Uh... Uh, well, final bar li line specifically because this game is kind of just the same game that's been released like four times with added content each time, and they kind of they change stuff up. How how the kind of campaign mode in this works is different, and honestly isn't as good as the older ones, in my opinion. But all of the gameplay of the RPG mechanics are all intact, and uh. It has all the music they've had before, plus more. It has, I don't know, like 600 songs, 800 songs. I don't even know. It got so many songs. I haven't even been able to play all the songs in the game because there is so many songs, and it's so long. It is packed with content. I did re reach the credits, at least. And just, if you like rhythm games, I highly recommend even if you have not played much Final Fantasy, because I played the first Theater Rhythm, and I had never played a mainline Final Fantasy. I would only played spinoffs. And yet I was hooked because the gameplay is so good. And Final Fantasy has very solid music, even if you have no context. So... I highly recommend people get it. Check that out if you haven't. Uh... Yeah, you know, as top tier, yeah, and the great thing is it has some of the best rhythm game gameplay I've ever ha experienced since DDR, so. <laughs> best multiplayer game of 2023. This one actually has four nominees, so here we go. <laughs> Only Final Fantasy games spent a decent amount of time with Crystal Chronicles. That was Crystal Chronicles and Tactics Advance were my first two Final Fantasies, so I totally understand. It's worth branching out into the... the uh, first Baldur's Gate 3. That's an ongoing multiplayer game I'm playing. Uh, multiplayer works really well. It's the type of game that's so just as solid multiplayer as it is single player, but in very different ways. So it's, most people probably will want to do both. Disney Illusion Island. Uh, I typoed it, so Disney's Illusion Island. But, uh, yeah, it's... I nominated it. Uh, it was a game that me and... Uh, honestly, most of the games here are probably ones that I played with Inheritance and my friend Shady. So. <laughs> <laughs> Except this, uh, Party Animals, which uh, I've only gotten to play like one session of, but I got to play with the Digital Bonfire, and it was kind of a blast and chaotic. Uh... I do recommend it to people, but it is a entirely multiplayer game. So, like, if you don't really play multiplayer games, then you might not enjoy it. But if you enjoy, like, kind of chaotic party games, it's it's good. And final, finally, Super Mario Bros. Wonder uh, for another nomination because, uh, yeah, the multiplayer is pretty great in it. And unfortunately, the online isn't quite as good as the local but at least it has online, unlike Disney's Illusion Island. <laughs> uh, yeah, Maple, I keep my eyes peeled for when you do more party animal sessions. I, By the way, I do want to mention uh, Shellshock Prime is the one who gifted me party animals. It was a last-minute thing when we switched from doing Among Us, and so I didn't even expect to play it when we did, and I just it was out of nowhere. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, I'm playing a new game, I guess. <laughs> But it was great enough that I nominated it. So, uh, so thank you, Shell. <laughs> uh, but only one can win. And best multiplayer is... Uh, let me make sure that I have it. I'll just... Pick a, uh, sorry, I need to find the music. 
Uh. Oops. Uh. I picked the wrong one. I clicked the wrong song. <laughs> I was gonna say this is groovy. <laughs> that is not what I meant to click. I meant to uh. Crap. Where? I mean, you see what it is now. Uh, unfortunately, I have to essentially use the same song because it was very hard to find Baldur's Gate 3 music at all. Uh, turn it up a little because Baldur's Gate weirdly quiet. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 ongoing with... Uh, it, with Inheritance and uh, Shady Gamer. It works really well multiplayer. Uh, it takes like coordination. I've already get it's, it's D and D's. If classes, it's honestly probably the best way to play D and D in video game format. And mm -hmm. so that means that of course multiplayer is a big part that's implemented. It works really well. Uh, even a lot of the things you would think are single player, like romancing other characters, you could still do that in multiplayer. So, uh, yeah, it's unfortunately that was a very close one because I did wonder was a lot of fun and party animals. Honestly, I just didn't feel like I played enough of yet to hand it an award, but Baldur's Gate three, I think probably either way would still win. Uh, Yeah, I, I'm glad you li like the multiplayer even online, Maple. Okay, so now we are going into best indie game of 2023. Uh, so the first nominee is Killer Frequency. Uh, by the way, if anybody's wondering, the nominees are in alphabetical order. So that's just, I didn't want it to like accidentally like shift all the, the winners were in one slot or something or first or last or something. So I just, alphabetical order. There's no particular meaning to the no order of the nominations. Just the ones that I picked. But Killer Frequency, I already talked about, kind of played out of nowhere. And uh, it, uh, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Like it was... A really interesting experience and there's really no game I've ever played that's quite like Killer Frequency. Uh, second is Oxenfree 2, Lo uh, Lost Signals. I first played the first Oxenfree like years ago on stream and so I played this right around when it came out on uh, stream and yeah it's R really great story and really great kind of narrative base adventure game. Uh, they did a really good job with it. And fi finally, there's only three nominees here because I didn't play a ton of. I played a lot of. I played a lot of indie games this year, but not a lot that released this year. <laughs> Is that's kind of just how I am with indie games. I generally don't do a lot of them at launch. But the third one was Sea of Stars, which I've said. Phenomenal game. Highly recommend. Uh, honestly, I won't be surprised if I revisit it. Uh, even though I don't think there's a new game plus, and I did 100% it, but... Uh, either way, the winner out of those three is... Let me get the music... Sea of Stars. That might be a little loud. Because that's a lot louder than Baldur's Gate. Uh, it's actually still, I think, really loud. <laughs> At least compared to my voice. How, how long is it, Sea of Stars? Uh, I think it's like 20 hours-ish. I think so. It's, it's short for an RPG. It, it's it's the type of game that I would say is JRPG in style, even if it's a Western RPG. 
Between 25 to 30 hours, how long to beat those? Fair. And of course, it, it depends on if you want 100% too. And there's a lot of a lot of factors. But yeah, it's it's still on the shorter end for RBGs. Uh yes, Sea of Stars is excellent. I kind of like I I was vaguely interested for in it for a while, but it was kind of one of those games that I wasn't sure if I was gonna get around launch because it depended on if other stuff came out around it, but I'm glad I picked it up because it just it has a, vi a very solid story. Uh, well, some of the characters are a little aren't quite as interesting as others. Uh, it has some really great characters, and the uh, what do you mean? The what RPG mechanics, like the battle mechanics, are really uh, they don't get boring. Doing battles over and over, they're kind of like puzzle battles, and. Uh, so it's it's rare for an RPG that I don't get late game of, that I usually late game I'm kind of tired with battles and zone out but like Sea of Stars kind of keeps your interest and engagement with the battles. Uh So yeah. Now uh for a bit weirder of a category. Best what the fuck is this mini games? I guess of twenty twenty three, because this is there's not nominations. This is just a single game that I felt like I wanted to mention, uh, and probably nobody watching has played this, which I'm not necessarily right. saying whether you should or not. It's called yeah, you want those games, right? Well, so here you go. Let's see that you clear them. Uh, I got this on Switch. It's like, I think like five bucks. I think it's on Steam too. Uh, it's basically a collection of like five, I think, types of games that are based on like those mobile games you see in ads that are never actually the game. And so there's just a bunch of stages on them. Uh, and they're just what you want the mobile game to be, but it's not. You brought this for silver on Steam? On Steam? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, it's like five bucks, like I said. And it's honestly worth it for the price. I haven't quite 100% it yet, but I've done like a lot of it. And it's good when you just want some short little puzzle things to do. Uh, I wish they would update it, though, to add it in more games based off of the game mobile game ads that are never the game because usually the ads I see like I want to play what that game was in the ad but it just doesn't exist also the music is this it's, it's, it's weird <laughs> I am surprised that I found the music to download somewhere online because it seems so obscure <laughs> but yeah also the, the graphics have like stick figures and stuff it's a low budget game but it's not meant to it's not meant to be a game of the year but it's worth mentioning because i think it's worth five bucks uh now to a little more serious of a category just a little best remake slash remaster as i said this year got a lot of remakes and remasters this after rpgs i think was the second longest list of games that i had to trim down to four there was just so many. And unfortunately, it was really hard to because I really liked a lot. A lot of games got remakes or remasters that were games that I really wanted to get to play again. So, Thor, of course, the first is Advanced Wars. Like, why would I not pay? You, you, you guys, if you know me, you know I love Advanced Wars. And that was my one of my most hyped announcements when it was announced because... I was thinking we might eventually get it, but I never knew when. I and it was still a maybe, and we we got it. The second is Metroid Prime Remastered. Again, I've already talked about that. A lot of these are probably in other categories. 
Uh, but this one isn't. Pikmin 2. We, out of nowhere, got remakes of uh, Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 on the Switch. Or remasters, more. Uh, and Pikmin 2, up until Pikmin 4, was my favorite in the series. And I th- they they did make some changes that I were a little was a little disappointed about some they t- they took out like the brand name stuff they changed some of the uh the lo- the logs or in emails and stuff they kind of they censored it a bit but it's still intact and I still highly recommend the game and it's the gameplay is unchanged and it's just as fun but I know Pikmin Two is not for everybody it's it's uh, it's slower paced than other Pikmin games, but I like kind of being able to take my time. And Pikmin Four kind of refined that with the uh, underground areas. The fourth nominee, Super Mario RPG. Uh, as I said, it was a very quality remake that added so much stuff, and I really hope Thousand Year Door remake is the quality of Super Mario RPG Remake. Because I had a blast. I am sure I'm going to play this remake multiple times. I've been thinking of challenge runs I might do on stream of it. Like, I... What can I say? It's a great game. But what is the winner? Which of these remakes is the best remake? Uh... And it is Advance Wars. Uh, I mean, I've already talked. I I love Advance Wars. I do wish the re- the remake or remaster added more content. I wish it had a better online. But everything it otherwise is one to one in this game. Other than visually, visual and audios, other than aesthetics. I think Way Forward did an excellent job bringing the characters to life. I think uh, the music is really good. The the graphics the, uh, of the units and stuff maybe are not quite the best they could be, but they're good enough. The characters all look great. I just wished it was fully. Uh, oh, I'm on this on loop. Why is it not on loop? Uh, I do wish it was fully voice acted because the voice actor did a really good job, but very quality. Yeah, I'm glad it was worth the wait too, Maple. I'm just worried that it might have flown on the, under the radar too much. And yeah, imagine if we got level up dance for all characters, thousand your door. That would be amazing. But yeah, so that's uh. That is the. My pick for best re- uh, remaster or remake. Though I think they were all... No, the Mo- Super Mario RPG, I would say, is a remake. The others were remasters, but they were quality. Uh, next is... Best Story of 2023. Uh, so we're getting out of genres and into like more of the traits about the game. And uh, I love a game with a good story. There were a lot of good picks. That shouldn't be on here. Why is... What? I didn't nominate that, right? No, the picture is... Ignore the pi- the picture, I guess. Like, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It happens. Uh, hopefully it's the, there for the big picture, but... Pretend there's a picture there. Hey there, Dragon. Welcome. Uh, Bait and Kaito's 1 and 2 HD Remaster. I unfortunately haven't started 2 yet because they're lengthy games. But that was another game I didn't think would ever get a remaster. I kind of thought that uh, it just wasn't deemed successful enough. And... uh, Bait Wars HD Remaster. And uh, the the story in Bait and Kaitos, it is wild. It is up there with Xenoblade Wild. Possibly wilder. 
Uh, again, I don't know the second one. It, I haven't played it yet. But the first one alone, if you like a good story with lots of plot twists and lots of like intrigue, uh, Bait and Kaitos is up there. And the remaster is worth, worth replaying. My only complaint is that they cut out the English voice acting, which people didn't really like the English voice, ga- voice acting, but it should have been an option still. Yeah, I hope you do, Dragon. I want to hear your thoughts when you get to actually some of the bigger plot twists. Second, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. I already said, this game has a really solid story. Uh, It has a lot of plot twists, and I can't really talk about them without spoiling the game. Just trust me, it's good. (laughs) (laughs) Persona 5 Tactica. One of the best things this thing this game did was its story. I think Persona games are really good at a story. And, uh, yeah, of course, like story-based games in a series are, I don't recommend replay- or playing it until you've played the original. And Sea of Stars. As I've already said, really great story. I don't need to say it again. I've already nominated it for other stuff. And now, let's see what the uh, winner is. By the way, I don't usually remember what I picked for the winner. (laughs) So it's a surprise for me, too. It's a surprise for everyone. (laughs) Even with all the time I put into this, I don't usually remember, uh, which is why I got the music wrong once. Uh, But best story is... Okay, I remember. Persona 5 Tactica. I mean, I'm biased because I first experienced Persona this year. Uh, I just like the way the games, the, like the way the narratives go. Uh, they're, they tend to have, are on the more mature side of stories, the darker side, even despite their colorful appearance. But, like, I, I just feel really drawn into the stories and into the world in general that they build. And I mean, there's not a lot to say otherwise because once again, it's a sequel. It builds it builds on all the, everything that Persona Five originally built, and so you got to play Persona Five really first. But. Uh, and I don't say it lives up to Persona 5 in terms of story. I wouldn't expect a, a spinoff to. But it's still very quality. And again, I'm biased. I like other games probably did have better stories this year. This is just my personal selection. All of these are like some of them I try to put a little more objectives into, but they're going to eventually be subjective. And just play the persona games everybody like if you haven't played them just play persona they like changed my worldview so uh now best sound and or music again it's a thing that i don't feel it's worth having two categories for sound and music because usually it's music that is the big thing Sometimes sound, the sounds, effects, and stuff are good, but like, I'm a sucker for some good music. Advanced Wars Reboot Camp did a really great job of like making some like remixes, like remastered versions of the old uh, 32 bit music from the Game Boy Advance. Uh, you're working that? Uh, Persona 5. Yeah. I, I recommend getting back to Dragon. It is one of my most highly recommended games of all time at this point. <laughs> uh, I gave a co-worker a list of three uh, RPGs I recommended for Switch because they wanted a list of three, and Persona 5 was on there. So, But uh, yeah, Reboot Camp, just the music is just really well done. I'm really happy with how they did it. 
uh, way forward did it, and I hope they work on future games. I hope we get remake a remake of Dual Strike because that was, in my opinion, the peak of the series. Uh, Persona 5 Tactica. Per- Persona music's just really solid. I would say this is the weakest of the music I've heard in Persona games so far, but the weakest is still really good. Uh, there isn't a lot in here that in the soundtrack that I find myself going back to listen to. There are a few. There's not a lot. But during it, I still was like, oh, this is a good jam. You, Andy's theme, <laughs> Andy's theme is good. Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars, another one of its big strengths is the music. And its predecessor, The Messenger, very much did the same. And in fact, uh, a lot of there are songs from The Messenger that are remixed on Sea of Stars. And I just got to give a uh, personal shout out to uh, my favorite song in Sea of Stars, which was the theme to uh, think, but what was the area called? Uh, Glacial Peak. Glacial, that is, it's rare for a complete instrumental game like that. Like, that's like very old style, retro style game. It's rare for a modern retro style game to kind of stick in my mind as much of that. But Glacial Peak hyped me up so much. And that alone is enough to nominate it. And Super Mario RPG. Again, they did a really great job on uh, remastering the old music. Uh, I kind of found myself torn whenever I entered a new area because part of me wanted to switch on the retro music because you, tw- you could toggle between. And part of me mo- wanted to have the new music. And ultimately, I stuck with the new music, though I'd sometimes turn it on, the retro on, briefly to kind of compare it in my mind. Because a lot of the... Most of the time I get to I'd hear the Mii music, I'd be hyped, but I'd be like, isn't this the same song? And then I'd listen to the original version, I'd toggle to that, and I'd be like, oh no, it's very different. This is just how my mind remembers it. Like, they really did a good job of capturing, like, how it felt in that age of the Super Nintendo when we had different expectations for music because the more limited soundboards but like it's exactly how i always envisioned the music uh i talked a bit a lot about these ones wow but we're going to uh announce the winner good thing the og soundtrack is unlockable oh it's not just unlockable it's in there you just toggle it at any time uh which as i said i i did now and then i might go my next run play through just with the original music but the winner which was a tough pick for this category is super mario rbg uh meant to have the music like it was even hard for me to pick what music what song track i wanted here in the award uh, I almost lean towards the the, uh, the forest maze because that is very iconic too and very good. Yeah, Shimamura does not miss. Like, and I do want to. I actually want to tell a like twenty second story, if you could call it a story. That's when I was playing this game during one of the tracks in the newer versions of the songs. I all of a sudden thought this really sounds like similar to a Kingdom Hearts track. And then I got curious and I looked up the composer and I was like, oh, well that's why. It is the same composer. And like, yeah, they're a really good composer. And I just, it's, it's Super Mario RPG, even the old original, it's something that I just constantly randomly have pop in my head is the music. And it's one of my favorite things about one of my favorite games is the music. It does explain a lot. But listen to the jazz, it's so good. 
But, okay. So, you gotta keep it moving. I can't just sit here and listen to the entire soundtrack of Super Mario RPG as much as I want to. I'll do that later. <laughs> so, next, now that we're done with the visuals, art and graphics. Art and or graphics. The first is Cereza and the Lost Demon. It had a uh, very beautiful, like, almost like watercolor style of art that I've never seen really done since, like, Okami. And, but yet very different than how Okami did it. Second is Persona 5 Tactica. It uses the, the same kind of art palettes, well, the palettes as base Persona, but it with that brown, brand new chibi graphics. The chibi graphics had to grow on me, but it has it's very stylized, Persona, the Persona art, Persona 5 at least. And I'm... I think that deser- at least deserves a, a nomination. It's, it's, I feel, one of the more artistic visually games. Almost like a graffiti artist style. Mm-mm. Pikmin 4. Here we're going a completely different direction with that nomination because we're going more to, like, beautiful kind of realistic environments, but, like, you're small. So everything kind of looks way more grand just like flowers blades of grass and it's so realistic that if i didn't see all these weird fictional creatures i might have thought it was a photograph at times like and i mean that in the best way sometimes realism is very bland but it's very colorful and pikmin's always had a really good art style but this by far three three really ramped it up and four just blew it out of the park and finally is Super Mario Wonder, which just is all over the place with its wacky art style, and it was what Mario needed. I think visually it's the best Mario game ever, visually. Uh, the animations uh, are all, like, when you stomp on a Goompa and all the Goompas around it just have this look of horror for a brief moment, as the text pops up, Good! It just visually looks so so great and charming, and mm-hmm. like it was one of its probably it might be its strongest suit of the game is the visuals. All of these, this was another hard one to pick because all of these I thought were very visually stunning in different ways, but I did have to pick, and I I remember what I pick. I absolutely do not regret what I pick picked because. I feel it's deserved, uh, and it is Cereza and the Lost Demon, which also special shout out to its very beautiful soundtrack. That's uh, like I don't even know how to describe it. Like, like opera esque, like an opera like style, like. I don't know. It's like a it's symph- like a symphony. It's like symphonic music, but we're not talking about music though. That's great. The art style. I played on the Switch OLED, and I especially I'm glad I did there because it is so colorful and really popped. There's some very trippy, like art moments, and I just I wish it would be talked about more in that regard because it when I was playing like I remember seeing. Sc- first seeing like screenshots and videos of this game and I was like I can't imagine playing this this doesn't look like a game this looks like just like an animation or something and but like playing it it's just like kind of this otherworldly feeling yeah Mario's new art style is fantastic but like Cereza Cereza visually is art is like high art like fine art like, you could take screenshots of this game and put it in a museum, and I think people wouldn't realize. <laughs> uh, and it, I just, I wish people talked about the game more. They, people got turned off from the gameplay, but, like, the gameplay is enjoyable enough still. 
but vis visual and audio, like, this is a treat for the senses. Which is also very much not like Bayonetta, where it's grotesque violence, usually. Okay. Uh... And now for the last of this kind of, uh, traits of the game category, uh, best writing, uh, which I, I'll define writing because I did story. Writing is like character dialogue, descriptions of stuff in game, anything that's not the story itself. Uh, write, writing can also kind of to some extent include like a character arc because it's not really the story if if you kind of get what i mean but i mostly mean like stuff like dialogue uh yeah world building dragon kind of yeah first is ghost trick all the characters i think have really good little like personalities it was, it's really, it's fun. It's kind of Ace Attorney kind of writing because it's an Ace Attorney kind of creator, as in it's, an Ace, it's Ace Attorney's creator. So, like, really good writing. Second is Killer Frequency. I had to think hard if I wanted to include that, but I think I do. Uh, because... I don't know. The it's very interesting because there's not. It's all voice acted, and so I don't really focus on the writing, but the way that the the dialogue, like the the small little sections of uh, things going on, that isn't really the story. It's just kind of the uh, the characters and they're like issues they're trying to work through I think it's very creative yeah the dialogue lends a sensible world yeah and it kind of it drew me in to feel like I'm really in this hick town in the middle of nowhere can I say that on I think I could say that on Twitch I don't think that's a bad word of course again Persona 5 Tactica uh, I love how characters are written in Persona I uh I I loved how the main character written but I also loved how the new character written. I everybody's a little over the top in Persona and that's kind of the point. But if they're not really one dimensional and like having when once I play through a Persona game, like I can be approached what would this character do in a certain situation at this point i know i just know the character like they do a very good job at establishing their personalities and their mannerisms persona 5 did get a lot of nominations i think it was deserved more attention than it got this year but i understand not everybody's into tactical games persona 5 kind of has been done to death and it's a spin-off. Like, there's reasons why it didn't get covered a lot. And I'm kind of trying to draw attention to games that didn't get covered a lot that I think should have. And again, Sea of Stars. Uh, the writing's a little more hit and miss there. The characters that are written well are really written really well. Like the pirates you'll meet early on. Uh, the main characters, the main two characters, I feel, are a little more bland in their dialogue. But overall, very quality writing. As for the winner, uh, this is the category I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Killer Frequency. Also has some, some I, I was, I was kind of like, is this licensed music? I, but it's not licensed music. It just sounds like it could be. <laughs> this could be real music. But, uh, yeah, it kind of came out of left field. I think, though, that it it really deserved some sort of shout out, and I think some of the writing is probably some of the best stuff in the game. It just it feels real. They feel like real people, 
This feels like a real situation that, like, you're trying to get people out of. And, like, with the one person that died, like, I was... The writing was good enough at being made to be like, well, this guy's kind of a dick. Like, <laughs> these feel like they could be real people, though. And while it's not stylized like some games, that's exaggerated personalities, it's good writing in its own way. Oh, I hope you inheritance that you don't feel like you like can't speak up if you have any thoughts because I know you've kind of been enjoying it. But yeah, I'm vibing. Uh did you know that the developers of Killer Frequency also made Monster Sanctuary? I did not. That is mm-hmm. impressive. The the <laughs> those games share almost nothing in common. <laughs> but I guess they both have writing. <laughs> They both have writing. But that wasn't released this year, so that couldn't be nominated. Yeah. Best DLC of 2023. These are games aren't necessarily released this year, but like got notable DLC. I will note before I do the nominations that after I did everything and was like almost done with the presentation, I realized... Oh, wait, Persona 5 Tactica got DLC, and I didn't even consider if I wanted to nominate it, but I decided, you know what, no. I don't think I want to count a game where the DLC was released alongside the game. It just doesn't feel fair. It's not in the spirit. It's not, like, I think it's fine. That's a whole discussion on it. And I think Persona 5 Tactica did fine adding value that the DLC felt worth the additional purchase. But... It's not really the spirit of DLC for me. These are this is more of content that refreshed a game that didn't just release. The first is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, which finished up to this year and uh or this past year. <laughs> and yeah, it added 48 tracks to the game that already had I think 48 tracks so it's at 96 tracks uh most of them being older tracks and pretty much all of them being stuff they did in mario kart tour but they did kind of make the tracks they they polished them up a little so they don't look like they're running on your phone uh most of them at least and uh i think they're good tracks they pick some really fun ones I liked having so much content put into it, and I kind of wish they would do this more with games like Mario Kart, and rather than just release a game with 24 tracks or whatever, and then just move on and do it again in five years, just be like, okay, here's $20 to double the content of the game. And uh, I also am really glad they brought the tour tracks, because I was worried those would never be playable in a mainline game. Oh, I'm glad you're heavily enjoying Monster Sanctuary Dragon. That's I know that's a little off topic, but like I'm glad you you took our recommendations because it's really great. So <laughs> this games I'm writing. Sorry about the awful crop here. I could not find a good image, but Pokemon Scarlet, the hidden well, Scarlet and Violet. Maybe I should have said both. But personally I have Scarlet, so personally I played it through Scarlet, and it's the hidden treasures uh treasure of Area Zero. I'm currently still partway through Wave 2, uh, which is the Indigo Disc. Uh, but I've consumed enough of it that I felt I could still comfortably nominate it. And uh, it adds a lot of content. It actually, Wave 2, I feel is more enjoy. I'm enjoying Wave 2 more than I enjoyed the base game of Scarlet. So. Uh, theater rhythm final bar line. I mean, it got DLC. It got a lot of DLC. It added like <laughs> another hundred songs or something, and it was all crossover stuff from other games. Mostly, I, I think one of them was Final Fantasy sixteen because that wasn't out yet when the game launched. But uh, otherwise, it added Bravely Default. It added Saga. It added uh. 
The World Ends With You. It added, like, I think Nier. It, it was, it added, like, every RPG Square owns, pretty much. I wish it added Super Mario RPG. It did add, I think, Xenogears, but uh, Xenoblade is not Square Enix, unfortunately. But it added so much content, and this is a case where it just added a glut of content, which is kind of what Mario Kart did, though, too. So it wasn't really content that as own had any special meaning, but it was enjoyable, and I actually have a few times literally booted up Final Bar Line just to play the three World Under the U songs because I really like that game soundtrack. And then I, after I play the three, I sit there and be like, I wish this had more songs from that game. And finally, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed, which more like Scarlet is actually adding up story, but it's a, this is standalone story that may as well be a whole nother game, although it's a short game, like 10 hours, 20 a few, 100%. But it was kind of the DLC that wrapped up all the games, the Xenoblade trilogy. And what did I nominate out, or what did I award out of these four games? Let's all find out, including me. (laughs) Uh, Let me scroll. There we go. Why the music not play? Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is... It's basically Nintendo's biggest JRPG at this point. Uh, it was... Like, I remember it coming... It almost We almost didn't even get it in the West. And uh, thanks to Operation Rainfall, possibly... Or maybe just coincidence. We did get Xenoblade on Wii, and it had kind of a rocky start until we got to Xenoblade 2. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, until Xenoblade 2. But the trilogy, it's a, the second game doesn't even feel connected to the first uh, for most of the game, but 3 kind of connects them all, and Future Redeemed, the DLC, ties it all together. I wouldn't recommend Future Redeem to anybody that hasn't played the entire trilogy because you're actually going to spoil stuff from all the games and you're going to be very confu- more confused with the plot than you already would be if you played it all. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to play a Gages DLC. I haven't even done any Gages DLC, so it was not eligible. I can't compare it. But uh, yeah, if you have played it, Future Redeemed is the perfect send-off to the trilogy. And it's bittersweet because it seems like they're truly going to move on from this arc. But also, it's about time to move on, and it was a good wrap-up. There were some flaws here and there with the Future Redeemed, but overall, I think it was very solid. It was a little fan servicey, but very solid. And it had some great music, just like all Xenoblade. As you can hear. Uh, do a Zelda DLC? Uh, I don't want to upset anybody, but I'm kind of glad it didn't. It was huge enough. <laughs> it was already like 60% bigger than Breath of the Wild, I think, in length. So, Best delayed game of 2023. <laughs> I wonder what, which one that's going to be. Oh, I have three nominations out of the games I played that came out this year. There was three of them that had notable delays. I mean, knowing you, I, I have a feeling which one's going to be without even knowing the now. Nom- probably. I mean, you could probably guess for a lot of these, though. So, Pikmin 4. I didn't count Pikmin 4 delayed because it never got a release date. These are games that got a date or window and then it got pushed back. And the first is, of course, Advanced Wars Reboot Camp, which was super unfortunate. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows why it got pushed back. It was it was supposed to release right around when the Ukraine war broke out. And that was kind of tragic. They did feel that like the war theme wasn't appropriate then. 
but it just got pushed back so tragically long that me and I'm sure a lot of fans weren't sure if it was going to get released. Like, because that does happen. Finish games sometimes don't get released for it doesn't happen often, but it happens. Advance Wars One never released in Japan on its own because uh, it's released. I think it was around like nine eleven or something, and they didn't get Advance Wars One until they until Advance Wars Two came out and they released it in a double pack. And like so, Advance Wars has had a tragic history with a lot of games that got delayed ridiculously because they lined up with tragic events in the world and it's a little wild to me because th- it advanced wars is such a goofy game like there's much more serious darker war centered games like triangle strategy released around when advanced wars reboot camp was supposed to and was a way darker more tragic take on war uh i but they decided that to delay it and it took two years and the biggest unfortunate thing about that is a lot of the hype died and then it got overshadowed by being released like a month before Tears of the Kingdom, I think. So I hope that it still does well enough for them to warrant the conti- series continuing. A Dragon, a delayed game is eventually a game that is good, but like a delayed game can also hurt a game, at least in terms of sales. And that's the situation where it did. Tears of the Kingdom is the second nominee. That one was, I think, delayed a couple times. Advance Wars, I didn't mention, was delayed twice. Because the first time, it was just delayed like three months because they didn't feel it was ready. Or four months. That was just, uh, it wasn't ready. Tears of the Kingdom got delayed, though, a couple times. Because, uh, probably because they had that crazy rewind feature that i'm like how the heck did you program that (laughs) like i feel like that alone was like three years of development time that was insane but uh yeah it was delayed a bunch and it finally came out there was not a any sort of tragic story it just is delayed they never said why and the third i only found out by googling but action free 2 was originally supposed to come out like a year or two ago i think two years ago and it got delayed. And no, I think it was last year it was supposed to come out. It got delayed. It came out this year. I wasn't finding it close enough at least. But either way, those are the only three nominations. They are the only three games I could find out of what I played that were delayed. Granted, I didn't do a search on every single game I played, but like I did it for games that I thought maybe were. Uh Dragon Zelda's physics game system I think is kind of similar to a lot of physics systems it's rewind that's really something that's never been done before because anything that can that you can use it on they have to keep track of all of its positions for the past like what 10 20 30 seconds i don't know how long it rewinds by back but like they have to store all of that constantly it is insane but yeah out of these three Delayed games, Inheritance supposedly already knows. Reboot Camp. Yep. It's just, it was the most unfortunate thing, and I I think it really hurt the series. You were so sad. You were so sad. I remember vividly. Yeah, well, and I also thought that people were kind of being knee-jerk reacting about it like being like oh if you if you don't support this delay you're like a bad person that don't doesn't care about the war but like i don't think it was really i think it was a case of nintendo trying to be too safe and they delayed it way too long they should have at least been given a release date when they delayed it and not just been like indefinitely because wars will always be happening, we just don't always hear about them. And it sucks. But Advance Wars is really not this dark portrayal of war. It's just a fun board game, essentially. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is Andy's theme. 
Uh, and honestly, I think that it's the game that got hurt the most by the delays. Tears of the Kingdom was never going to suffer at all for its delays. And Action Free 2 was too small for anybody to notice. But uh, Advanced Wars was big enough that people noticed, but not big enough that they were going to wait two years and keep their hype up. Uh, they went more all in on the toy aesthetic for this remake. Yeah, they did. I really think there's a dissonance with Advance Wars and actual war that I think should logically be applied that this is not something that people dying in another country are going to be upset about that this released. Like, it's it's a shame. And I wish all that stuff wasn't happening. But I don't think any of that choice made a difference in any in any direction there. It just it just hurt a series that has had a re- lot of bad luck, and I hope it it doesn't get shelved for another two decades. But enough about that. Uh, now I have a few categories more connected to my stream and what I've streamed. And the first one is the best randomizer I streamed in 2023. Uh, which I think there was only four. I don't remember if I had to cut one. But there was four nominees. The first was the Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer. You have your vote. Uh, the Kingdom Hearts 2 randomizer, it was... It was very chaotic. It was very... Uh, I. It didn't feel like other randomizers. Like I didn't necessarily know what I my goal was a lot of the times because there's not like progression lock things, and I constantly felt like, well, can't I just go to the world that never was? But it was still fun to play Kingdom Hearts too. Kingdom Hearts Two is fun. Uh that is not the size it should be. Cool. Uh, let me shrink that because currently Inheritance has just been swallowed by Majora. I mean, it happens all the time. Uh, and I, it's not going to fit properly in the box now, but I'm not going to do all that because that'll take several minutes. Uh, Majora's Mask Randomizer. Uh... It's the second time we did it, but we did a newer version, and it was even more random. It randomized all of the boss remains and tested my knowledge of nook and crannies about the same as before, but now I kind of knew a little better where the nooks and crannies were. It was a good time. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Number three, the Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer. The first time I ever done a combo randomizer. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun. We had a sassy AI that, like AI voice, that I wish I had for every randomizer to uh, berate me and randomly do things that I didn't know why it did that. <laughs> but the game also was fun itself. Uh, Link to the Past is weirdly enough not like my favorite even close to my favorite 2d zelda i didn't play it much until i was much older because i mainly got into zelda with majora's mask and the oracle games so i don't know it quite as well super metroid i also didn't play until virtual console because i didn't know metroid existed until uh the upcoming time for uh metroid prime and metroid fusion i Super Smash Brothers, I thought that Samus Aran was a Mega Man character when I was like <laughs> 10 years old because <laughs> I didn't play Mega Man either. I was like, oh, that looks kind of like a Mega Man thing. That looks like a Mega Man. I also didn't know that Samus was female, but like that was kind of just me, be- me being late to the bamboozlement, so... Uh, but yeah, so those were game, both games that I didn't know quite as well, and I did. I'm thankful I had a tracker because otherwise I would have 
been stuck forever. We also got soft locked the first attempt, which was weird. But yeah, at least you didn't think Samus Aran was a Halo character. Halo didn't exist yet. Last was a uh, Wind Waker randomizer, our most recent one. That was uh, it was kind of cool the way it was kind of open world. Well, I mean, all of them are, but it was more than ever because you really could reach anywhere, any island at least. And we had some fun shenanigans where I couldn't find a sword for three streams, but that seems to be every Zelda game at this point, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Out of those three, that, or four, I can't count. Uh, the winner. And therefore, the music. I had to make a choice. And I chose to do Zelda music because I couldn't do a f fusion. But, uh, yeah. This crossover one uh, was... It was wild. The... The... The, uh... Chat bot or whatever it was definitely helped set it in my mind is the best thing because that gave it some extra shenanigan stuff but it also was kind of fun and interesting having to go back and forth with worlds and juggle these two things at the same time it was chaotic but like if you play a randomizer you're playing it for chaotic like you don't play it for order so uh yeah e even though they all the other three other choices are games that i vanilla like more than these two games though i love super metroid and link to the past i still love them both but the other three are games i love them more but just the way this is set up it made it more memorable for me so yeah that's best rando now for something more pertaining to inheritance yeah Best visual novel streamed. <laughs> the choices. Uh, first, Ace Attorney Investigations. Uh, I think technically we, no, we that was that started in the summer. That was that was like the second half of our year, kind of. Uh, yeah, that was that was fun. I don't, I still don't like it as much as the original trilogy, but it still was a fun a fun ride. Uh, second, AI the Somnium Files, which was absolutely wild. Like, I... That was a trip. <laughs> and I look forward to eventually doing uh, the Se Nirvana, Nirvana, Nirvana Initiative. Yeah, Nirvana Initiative. Uh, because I hear it's also really solid from, like, from friends I know who are a fan of the games it it holds up at least holds up to the original if not more aviary attorney was originally kind of be a little joke thing like it was crazy like i i don't know i had a lot of fun with aviary attorney yeah aviary, aviary attorney was a blast like i think i i might enjoy it more than some of the actual ace attorney games so I wouldn't blame you. And last, Ghost Trick. A, a little less, like, it's more on the edge of visual novel, but still a visual novel, I'd consider it. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, that was the one that bled into this year. Those are, I think, the only ones we did that past year, because time, but, like... Remember when did Avia turn it? Yeah. It was, uh, these were all fun. These were all fun. I enjoyed all of these. And it was admittedly another hard category to pick the winner, but I do know what I picked. And let me just dramatically try to lag scroll and get the music. The Somnian Files is just so wild. Like, 
I most of the time I had no idea what was going on. I, like Ace Attorney games and stuff, I usually can have some sense of a theory. Oh, this is louder than I thought. <laughs> yeah, th this was like Ace Attorney. I can put up, put up together theories of what's going on. AI, I was just constantly what that. Like I had some vague theories, but it was just all over the place. Breaking into musical numbers, like weird uh, possible relationship with a uh, with uh, Mama. Like the a, a yuka, yakuza that is arguably stranger than the yakuza games. It was and the characters so great. Can't wait till I do the sequel. I can't wait till I do the sequel, Shady. It is either on my list. I'm looking forward to it. Like. This this was just it was a blast. All the games we did were a blast, but this was I I, I know most of the lyrics to this song too, because this song is great. You finished I mean this Zero Escape? No, that or yeah, we finished last year. We did not do any Zero Escape this year. Oh I don't know this verse. Okay, cool. <laughs> but uh unfortunately we can't just listen to the whole thing. But it, it's so great. Fruit never expires. Fruit never expires. Ah, oh, God, that was I. That's one of those games that I wish I could experience for the first time again. Okay, and now our third stream-related one: best ROM hack slash challenge. I streamed in 2023. So before I do that, I do want to hear inheritance. What was your for the visual novels, since those were games we did together, what would your pick have been? Favorite visual novel we played this year? Last yeah. year? Yeah. Out of those four. Because I mean, those were the only four we did. I think AI Somnia Files was such a delight in so many ways. Like, we, we, we encountered so many different characters, learned so many things about life, and, <laughs> like, it was, it was such a pleasant breath of fresh air like obviously we the attorney games are like our bread and butter uh but this was like in a lot of ways f a lot of firsts for us together as co-streamers and i think that's like really cool i'm glad we're on the uh, we're on the same wavelength there or that game is yeah and i can't believe i got that game super cheap on sale but yeah, uh, for to the publisher out there, I did get it twice because I I did already have it on Switch and didn't even realize it. But not that we could have done that version. But I, <laughs> I which I got it on sale on Switch too. So it's it's a game I own on two platforms, and maybe I'll play the Switch version someday, which is identical but just has no completion for me because I'm not booted it up. But, uh, you wish fruit never expired. Oh, uh, let's not get into that discussion again. Yeah, no, we had a, like an entire... I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, so first, ROM hacks less challenge. Banjo-Kazooie Jiggy's a time. God, that was an experience. That was an experience. We're only, There's only three games on the, on the list, by the way, for this. Uh, I originally did have... Uh, a fourth one I had uh, the I thought I had four already what did I take off the list I guess we'll find out <laughs> the second was a uh, book of Mario thousands of doors I didn't really mention the Jiggies of time was if for those that didn't see it was Banjo Kazooie in Ocarina of Time and we're going to continue that tomorrow with the Majora's Mask one uh, Gruntilda's Mask which is going to probably be a one shot because it's only 20 jiggies and that's roughly how much we got to stream before but we'll see if, if somehow it's weirdly long then we'll break it up but book of mario thoughts of the doors it was paper mario thousand year door through through uh google translate or something for x number of times i don't know it was nonsense it was crazy 
It was funny at times. It was baffling at other times. It was an experience. Was it a good experience? I guess you can decide. <laughs> it was one of the experiences of the year. <laughs> okay, I, I did have this one in here. Uh, the text is off Saturn. I don't know. Uh, spent so much time like trying to center all the text, trying to get everything cropped into boxes. I, I, knew, I knew it was not going to, like, it was not going to be right somehow. Listen, yeah. you do your best, and that's how you're going to ask for it, you know? Well, you guys know I put hours into this. <laughs> Just throw oh, that. Oh, trust me, viewers. <laughs> trust me. Days. He didn't just put hours. He put days. I mean, hours broken up into multiple days. Because it was very tedious, so I, I couldn't do it in long periods of time, or it was just got frustrating. Yeah. I had to hook up my Bluetooth mouse because this was awful to try to do with the trackpad. <laughs> and so my Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth mouse will have to be resynced to my Steam Deck later. But yeah, the Pokemon Shield Advanced King's Lock. That was absolute chaos there too for a completely different reason. It was like... I mean, it was... For those that didn't see, it was a challenge run where I used a deck of tarot cards... To impose random rules, sometimes you done by viewers, that constantly changed the game and absolutely tortured me in every way imaginable. Uh, I loved it. <laughs> it was so painful. One of the worst experiences of my, of my year, so it was one of the best. But uh, shout out to uh, Pokemon Iacal Chris, wherever you are out there, JJ. I haven't seen any you post anything for quite a while. I hope you're doing well, but thank you for uh, devising that rule set. I hope I hope some point I hear from you again. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't been active in his blog since like last June or something. So yeah, well, you know we but, we know a lot of personal stuff with him. Yeah, and what he's been doing and stuff. But I mean, I do know he's he must be alive. Because I've seen him, he's he's in the Discord group, and I've seen him online a couple times, now and then, very rarely. Yeah. So, I haven't really wanted, I don't, I don't know if we're close enough for me to, like, message him, though, so. But uh, now, for me to really quickly check to see what game that is missing from this list that should have been on here, and I guess not none, because I don't have anything else on here. Maybe there was only three. Okay. That makes sense. I can't think of any others that I did. So those are the three three nominees. And I'm going to do Book of Mario 64. To, I, I already did a book of uh, the original Book of Mario. I did that a while back. That I think was the year before I sa had my VOD save, though. I'm not sure if I want to do it again, to be honest. <laughs> uh... So the best one, though, uh, let me, this is one of the ones that I had to, uh, I couldn't download the music. I had to just go to the YouTube. Oops. Vandal Kazooie, the Jiggies of Time was just so wild it I know I didn't know what I was getting into when I went into it I knew nothing about the uh <laughs> okay this is getting a little too loud I knew I knew very little about it other than the premise of it was Banjo Kazooie but an Ocarina of Time's world I just for one I didn't they did really good the creator did really good placement for stuff. It uh, was very... Exploration was fairly intuitive. If you knew Ocarina of Time, you would know places you wanted to check, but then it had new areas that really fit well. It had all these crossover-like things, like randomly going into Metroid Prime. It had game cases hidden everywhere that were so fun to find. It had... Like just all these little polishes and then it had forest temple 
And that was unfortunate. The forest temple was miserable. But despite how ridiculously miserable the forest temple is, it still was one of the best experiences I had this past year. I highly recommend anybody play this if you're a fan of these games because it was just a delight. Like, the moments that I went wound up in Donkey Kong Country's first level, I just... I didn't think there was anything else to find at that point. We were near the end, and it's just crazy. Ah, uh, I'm glad it was a delight to witness. It was a delight to play. It was, and j partially just because of all the references. Kirko is amazing, and I'm going to sing the raises, and I'm going to play that Majora's Mask one, and I might play more of their mods in the future because that was one of the most impressive ones I've ever done. Or not mods, ROM hacks, but... Uh, final category for stream-related stuff. Best game I streamed in 2023. This is the best overall out of everything. First nomination was AI the Somnian Files. I had to. It was my favorite of the visual novels we played. It was just so good. Second nomination, Jiggies of Time. It's already shaping up to be a really hard pick. Like that, those are both really solid games. Killer Frequency snuck in there. I uh, didn't expect it to be one of my favorites, but I ended up picking it as one of my four favorites. Despite getting kind of frustrated with uh, the controls, uh, I still. Like I and I wish I didn't get the Switch version. I just got it on Steam, where because I, I think a mouse would have been, made it a lot better. But the game itself was really great. And the final one, Pikmin Four. Like that. Like that was one of those games that I just was wish, started to wish I wasn't streaming just so I could play it more often than four hours a week. And. That's such a hard pick out of these four games. But in the end, in the end, this computer may scroll and let me show what I picked. Uh, let me get music playing. Uh, it just, Jiggy's a Time was just so impressive. Like, this holds up. This holds up better than the real Bandra Kazooie Gruntilda's Revenge game, the official game made by Rare on Game Boy Advance. This mod was better. Is it better than the original Bandra Kazooie? Probably not, because that wouldn't really be fair. It is built on the original Bandra Kazooie. I definitely like Tui more, anyways. But. Out of the things I did, this was like, this was almost out, out, pretty much out of nowhere too. Like a week or two before I like looked this up, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stream this. Yeah, two wins in a row. Again, I'm sure Kirko Mods is not seeing this, but if somehow in your corner of the internet you stumbled on this, good job to you. Okay, so uh. We're getting. We're in the last handful of last stretch of nominees. First, I have a couple slightly odder ones, maybe. Uh, the first being best game I got for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> the nominations are going to be the three games I got for Christmas. I mean, these are three games I played. I did get other games from friends that I will get to that I haven't played yet, uh, including one that will be probably done on stream thanks to inheritance <laughs> but the first uh it was probably your favorite stream okay i'm glad you really liked that that it was so much fun but uh yeah so first is crisis core final fantasy reunion this was the first video game like the original was the first video game to make me cry like in in my life like i Finished it at like 1 a.m. 
when I was playing it and called my girlfriend at the time because I needed somebody to like calm me down because I was too emotional. And I haven't finished the remake yet, but I have already have started to feel the emotions well up as I'm like in the halfway point. It's a very good game. And you don't need to play the original Final Fantasy, by the way. I, or Final Fantasy VII. I didn't play the Crisis Core before Final Fantasy VII. I played it... Or I didn't play it after. I played it before. It was the first Final Fantasy VII game I played. Uh, Sonic Superstars. Technically, I didn't play Sonic Superstars until 2024, even though I got it for Christmas. Uh, and... I haven't finished it yet. I'm playing it with Inheritance and JD. Uh, the third is We Love Katamari Reroll and Royal Reverie plus Royal Reverie. I don't know how you read that out loud. I, I've never read that out loud before or heard it read out loud. But yeah, again, that's that one like uh, Crisis Core is a remake with added content. But Katamari only seems to get remakes anymore, unfortunately, but it is a really solid game, a remake of a really solid game, and really enjoyable. Uh, so out of those three games that otherwise wouldn't be on any lists here, because one wasn't released this past in the year, and the other two I wouldn't have nominated for anything else. Uh, it The winner is... Crisis Core, and I had to pick, like, probably my favorite song from the Final Fantasy VII franchise. Uh, I get emotional just with this song. Uh, this is Aerith's theme. Uh, and it's not due to any, even events in the game. It's just, uh, in my opinion, it, it's a very kind of bittersweet song. But, uh... Crisis Core, it's a game. It does have its flaws. It uses a weird roulette system that's constantly running in the corner of the screen that will randomly give you access to your summons or maybe temporarily make it so you have infinite MP. And also, that's how you level up. You need to get triple sevens on that, and that can be kind of frustrating. There's an experience system, but you can't see it, and... Uh, you don't level up automatically when you have enough experience. But for all of its flaws, it has a fairly emotional story uh, and has some still fun gameplay with the uh, action RPG mechanics. Uh, I do re recommend it to people who haven't played it. Uh, Reunion is essentially just the original game. I think it looks a little nicer. Uh, but it's no no real new content. I think they changed, tweaked some, like, mechanics with, with some things. Some hidden mechanics. But that's about it. It's just... I had, I, maybe I should have gone for a song that originated from the game. Because this is also in the original 7. And there's a lot of, like metal music in crisis core but like just I, I recommend this game to people it wouldn't win any even if it came out this year it wouldn't have won any awards like best rbg but it's still a fun game okay ready to get a little weirder uh because Always. next next category is best game I got last Christmas. That may it being 2022. That may be seem weird, but the logic is that most games I get for Christmas, I mostly play in the following year because there's only a week left of the year. So these are games that I played that I played a lot of in uh 2023 that I almost entirely played in 2023. And the only game that 
would have gotten nominated that I couldn't really with Sonic Frontiers because I got it, but it still haven't played it. It's in my backlog. <laughs> but the first one is Dragon Quest Treasures. This is a, uh, a monster collecting game, Dragon Quest game, but it's kind of, it feels very mobile-like in that you don't participate, you don't control the monsters. You just put them in your party and they do their thing. And you can uh, do some really crappy attacks to join in, but you basically collect and have them join you. And then there's this, this loop of gameplay where you go into the worlds to collect treasures to, to bring back to your base, to upgrade your base, so you could go out and collect more treasures. It's very grindy. Uh, next is A Hat in Time. A uh, very good uh, indie uh, 3D platformer. I don't think it's a collectathon. It's kind of inspired by uh, Super Mario 64. Some of the later worlds get really cool and really change things up, including one that's like straight up a horror world. Uh, all of them have very unique kind of mechanics. And I, uh, yeah, it was a really cool game that I still haven't quite finished because the DLC gets really hard. Finally, Persona 5 Royal. Uh, that's about half the reason this category exists. <laughs> because I spent, like, the first three, four months of the year, like, obsessed with Royal. So, uh... One of the best games of all time, I think, probably. Well, the series in general is. I would recommend anybody play this game if they have access to it. Uh, Royal adds a bunch of new content, but it's still the basically the same story, just new stuff. And there is added story, too. There's some minor things that I hear are lost, but not a lot. Uh, at least in terms of bad things there's a lot of quality of life improvements that fix how things work and it's just a really really good story based game and as for the winner out of these three games I mean obvious you all saw it coming you all saw it coming uh I wish I played the series sooner. I wish I played older Persona games. I'm glad I'm going to get to play Persona 3 Reload because there is just a very unique type of game these things are, these ones are, at least from what I've experienced so far. Uh, I know that each of them is a very different kind of themes, but they kind of seem to take kind of dark themes but kind of wrap them up in like you're a high school student <laughs> in Japan I don't know again I have to play the other ones to have more of a, more of an opinion there but Persona 5 Royal the music like almost the entire soundtrack pretty much no pretty much the entire soundtrack I can't think of a song I don't like outside of maybe Mementos and that's just because I heard it for two billion hours like the soundtrack's so good a lot of it's like this acid jazz style the uh graphics are very stylized the uh the gameplay is some fun uh, rpg dungeons that you play now and then and most of the time you're just going to school and talking with people but <laughs> It's a really immersive world with its own rules that you really start to understand of, like, how reality works. And there's a lot of themes you could apply to the real world, despite a lot of things that obviously are just exist for the sake of their world building. I could go on and on, and I could have entire streams just dedicated to talking about Royal. And people have made, like, deep dive videos of this that are, like, hours and hours long and only scratch the surface. 
But I mean, that's gonna happen with a 100 plus RPG, especially one like this, that's kind of... Story's always happening. And that's the big difference I noticed compared to something like Xenoblade, where like half the game is doing side quests. Royal, sure, half the game is doing side quests, but story's happening. You don't often feel like you're just grinding. And that's maybe the thing I liked most about it. Is that at the end of the day, I never got really burnt out with it. Because it always felt like there was more happening. I never felt like I was just repeating the same stuff to, to get through higher level things. If that, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh... There we go. Uh, now the last category that I would consider kind of almost a joke category. Best game I played less than five minutes of. <laughs> I didn't time it specifically five minutes. These are games that I booted up, pro- can count on my fingers how many minutes I probably put up, played of it. And then didn't play more. Not necessarily because they're bad. They're just games that I did it for whatever reason I didn't play more. Uh, probably all of them have a reason why. Like, Chris Tales. That was like a week before Christmas. I had finished uh, Persona 5 Tactica. I would finished Super Mario RPG. I finished whatever other... I think there were some other games I was playing that were not recent releases. I finished all of my like big games I was playing and I was like what can I play in this week leading up to Christmas and I bo- booted up Chris Tales being like I, mean, I can't fit it in but maybe I could start this I uh, started a battle and was like nope I don't want to learn how to play how this RP- I don't want to learn an RPG right now and I closed it and it was no fault of the game it looks cool I'm sure I'll play it it's, eventually it's a fun game yeah, I know you played it, and I'm, I'm sure I'll play it eventually. It was literally just, I don't feel like I actually want to get invested in this right now. The developers are Colombian. Ooh. I yeah, right? don't know if I know anybody that's Colombian. I mean, you did when we lived together. Okay, I, I knew somebody Colombian. <laughs> so maybe I kind of know the developers now. <laughs> You might. <laughs> uh, the second is Dragon Quest. Same time period. I actually got the dra- Dragon Quest super cheap on sale on the Switch. It's already cheap, but I got it even cheaper, like three bucks or something. And it was something I kind of wanted to play at some point. And then like a week before Christmas, when I was just trying to find something to do, I booted it up, uh, talked to everybody in the starting castle area, Walked outside, wandered into an area with a she slime. It murdered me, and I was like, "Okay, cool. This is going to take a lot of brain power." It's like one a.m. Probably. I don't know what time it was. Probably one a.m. <laughs> and that was it. And I'm going to go into it at some point. I want to play uh, all three of the older Dragon Quest games that are on all the shops now. But I just I barely played it. Third, Loop Hero. Twice this year. Twice this year I booted up this game. Uh, the first time was at some point I thought, oh, this seems like a very like small, simple indie game. Uh, I want something kind of mindless right now. I booted up. It was not mindless. <laughs> It was not mine. I was like, I was like, oh, like I played like probably like two minutes. I was like, oh my god, there is a lot of text to read on how things work here in this tutorial. I'll do this a different time when I'm not in a I need a mindless game mood. And so the second time was the week before Christmas, where I was like, maybe I have the thought process for this now, and I booted it up, and I was like, nope, and I closed it. <laughs> it looks super interesting to me. I want to play more of it. I want to actually play it, but I need to do it when I have the time to sit down and like figure out how it works. 
And there's a lot of games in Fortune that I have like that, that I'm like, these aren't going to take an investment to learn in. I need like to make sure I have at least an hour or two to sit down with this game at, in my first playthrough just to learn how it works. And the final one, Pixel Puzzle and Watch Collection. Uh, this is on Switch. It's uh, these Game & Watch style little consoles that uh, have three different uh, puzzle games. One of them is Picross. Uh, I don't remember what the other two are, but they're all simple puzzle games. And it's like L- LED style little systems. I It was another game that I picked up on sale at some point. I didn't play it right away because I know that Picross, I get weirdly super addicted to. Uh, a, a thing I maybe shouldn't share with everybody right now, but I'm going to anyways, is I played all the Picross games on 3DS voraciously. They would come out, I would complete all the puzzles in a weekend. I would do nothing else that weekend. I would not even sleep a full night's sleep because I would... I would be up till 5 a.m. being like, sometimes 6 a.m., being like, just one more puzzle. The dopamine rush of one more puzzle was so easy to get lost to. And the problem with it is by late game, just one more puzzle means 20 to 30 minutes for the big puzzles. And But the shorter ones that were like, a minute or two long trained me that oh it's not i can do just one more puzzle and so temporarily i had banned myself for buying picross games because i was like this is unhealthy and then i saw this thing and i was like it's super charming so i picked it up on sale i ended up uh again a week before christmas after i went into these other games i was like these are going to be two invest my like investments this one i was like well it's picross i could just do a few puzzles and i Boot it up, and uh, you know what? I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to progress into the winner because <laughs> <laughs> out of the out of the games I played less than five minutes of, uh, thirty telling that it w- was that one. I booted it up, and it takes you to those like kind of dark place with these three boxes just like realistic looking like packages that you would get a game and watch in and you have to like manually open them and then slide them out and you open up the instruction booklet which looks like a paper instruction booklet you can like unfold and look at uh and the entire thing is like it looks super realistic these like this screenshot doesn't do a good justice they look like realistic 3d models of game and watch devices the presentation is so cool uh the buttons are very simple because it's just mirrors the buttons on the device and there's like the the classic game a game b buttons and like it's really cool i ended up closing it up because i got i immediately found out there's no touchscreen controls and got a little like "Ah, i don't want to do this right now but the presentation is so cool that I, even just owning it, I like owning it because it's a cool thing to look at. But I do want to eventually fiddle around with them. All the th- games I nominated are ones I want to I want to play uh, play. But this one I thought was the coolest that nobody probably re- really would have heard of, and it's also fairly cheap, and it goes on sale, so. If you like game, pu- simple puzzle games like Picross, this is a good good source of that. Okay. Uh, three more. And the first one doesn't even have nominations because I only just picked the one game for it. The most <laughs> underwhelming game of 2023. Womp womp. I want to preface this before I reveal the game underwhelming doesn't mean bad underwhelming means it disappointed my expectations the most out of anything uh so this isn't a game that i'm saying is a bad game this is a game i'm saying i just was disappointed with and that i was hoping it was 
more than it was. Uh, Disney Illusion Island. Again, this was a this was wasn't bad, but it did kind of feel just run point A to point B back and forth a lot. The the graphics were cool, really really nice. I really liked how th how it looked visually. The music, as you can hear, is like an old old cartoon. It's all like classic Mickey Mouse stuff. Uh, but it didn't have that same kind of depth that other Disney games, Disney like Mickey games, have had. Uh, it was. The most fun about, thing about it was that I played it with friends. I would probably not have enjoyed this playing this solo. Because, for one, it probably would have been a lot more brutal. Uh, but also, running back and forth. Like, it made it interesting that I was interacting with friends. And I just, it's disappointing when that's the best thing I can say about a game. Because I wanted this to be like one of the like when i first saw the shown off i was super excited i was like this is this is gonna be like one like rot, like one of the best platformers of the past few years and it wasn't it was fine but i was underwhelmed and uh i don't regret purchasing it because i enjoyed playing it with friends but that's about it i don't I do kind of wish I wait, waited for it to be on sale or something, to be honest. I don't think I'll revisit it, and I'm never going to 100% it. But, That's fair. Yeah, I know, because we played it together. We were, You were one of the yeah. friends. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it. I So, like, it's like you said, just because it was underwhelming doesn't mean it was bad. Like, yeah, it I wasn't it was bad. A, I thought it was fun. It personally. was... I would probably score it if I gave this was giving this a score one to ten. I'd probably score a seven. A seven is mm -hmm. good. It's a fun game. Yeah. But like, there is so many games I'd just rather be playing. Like yeah. uh, that, I feel like would be I'd probably enjoy more. So, thankfully, it wasn't super long, and it did have its hilarious moments. Like everything Donald got as his power ups. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy was pretty funny too. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm not saying don't get this game. I'm saying just keep your expectations in check that this isn't going to be Mario Wonder. It's it's going to be a charming thing that I honestly just recommend if you're playing with friends. But maybe if you want, if, if it's your type of thing, you might enjoy it. I'm sure there's people who this was their game of the year. So... And now the second to last. Before we do the game of the year. The game of the previous years, 2023. These are games that I played for the first time this year that did not release this year. I kind of, like, I understand why no award ceremony would usually do this, but I feel this is an important thing when a person is personally picking their games for the year because we're all, we're not just playing games that released that year we're experiencing older games constantly and if we really love them it's not really fair that they can't get attention because we didn't play them the year they released so uh this is these are all going to, these are going to be Probably my four favorite games I played this year for the first time that were not 2023 releases. The first is The Messenger. Holy crap, I didn't know The Messenger would be that great. Like, I saw it, I was like, oh, this is like a Ninja Gaiden style of game. That's fine, I guess. I, I kind of thought I'd try to play it before... Sea of Stars, and then I didn't, and I was like, oh well. And then after Sea of Stars, I was kind of like, I'm curious. Like, Sea of Stars is pretty good. I'm curious about the Messenger. And then it was on sale, so I was just like, I'll, I'll I think it was, I think it was Black Friday I got it. So I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll try it. 
good lord, the writing. The writing, I would argue, is probably my second favorite writing of any game, with the first still being Portal 2. It was so hilarious, the sense of humor this game had. The way it was, the self-aware characters that are obviously supposed to be self-aware. The just like goofy stuff happening. The DLC, get the DLC, play that too. That was hilarious. Like, I just, I wished I was streaming it halfway through. Because I was like, I wish I was sharing this with somebody while I was playing this. This was so silly. And while it kind of got tough... Uh, it wasn't like tough as, tough as nails tough. I, I still, I can see why it might be a little hard for some people. And there were yeah. some parts I struggled with. Like I couldn't beat it. I had to put it down cause I couldn't beat it. Oh, you didn't finish it? No, it's got too hard for me. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah. I mean, it happens like you said, right? I'd recommend yeah. like watching a playthrough or something. Yeah. Uh, but I wish they had a way to play it easier because they have lots of ways to play it harder because not only does this game have new game plus it's actually called new game plus one because you could do new game plus two and new game plus three on to infinity and it keeps getting harder uh you get to start with uh each each additional uh cycle you get to start with one more item of your choice uh, to make it exploration go faster and stuff. Uh, but it'll constantly, it, everything will get harder, like by more and more multipliers. And if you, uh, and uh, anything after New Game Plus One is uh, hardcore mode, basically, where if you die, that's it. And if you die, you'll go all the way back to New Game Plus One. So that's a challenge thing to see how high you can get, which is cool. So they have ways to make it much harder. But I do wish they had a way to make it easier because the best part of it was the writing. And I think that anybody should be able to experience that. It isn't like a Souls game where the entire point is to be hard. So... Oh yeah, and I forgot, dang it. Well, that one's gonna messenger's gonna lose out. I was because I was gonna talk a little more about the nominees for these, I meant to play music for all of them. And this is Glacial Peak, which is in Sea of Stars in a remix. And this is the one that I get in my head constantly. And then when I heard it in Messenger, I was like, Yes, it originated here, I get to hear it again. Like, this hypes me up. And it, it deserves a moment because I should have had it playing in the background. <laughs> but, like, it's so good. Like, this is... I wish... I have nostalgia for this, and I played it this past year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have nostalgia for this version, even, from The Messenger, and I played it less than two months ago. Like, I feel like I've played this in my childhood, like this music. Okay, well, next nominee. Uh, this time I'll actually do the music. Monster Sanctuary. To be fair, Inheritance had been trying to get me to play this forever. Yeah, you... <laughs> It was a running bit that the more I recommended it, the less he was going to play it. Uh, that's not, I mean, I that's kind of, that's kind of how I just am. Like, I kind of lose interest in games when I constantly hear about them. No, that's fair. I just think it's, so, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> but like, at because a, like you were your own worst enemy about it. Yeah, but at, at some points... I decided to be, out of an act of kindness to Inheritance, I downloaded the game in his presence on Switch and was like, I'll play it when I make time for it. And then, eventually, I made time for it. And uh, he, he gets a manic text from me at, I don't know, it was probably like midnight or something on my sleep schedule. It was definitely late, yeah. 
in all caps, screaming, "You didn't tell me their skill trees." You did say that. That's literally the first thing you said about it. And I was like, I yeah. thought I did. I did. You're like, I thought it did. Also, you're playing it? <laughs> but, like, there's skill trees for every monster. I, I, may, I try yeah. to make it no secret. Skill trees are one of my favorite mechanics in games. They right. they are make very... Because they make a lot of the strategy be done out of, stra- out of battle. And it's a lot about making builds, and I have fun with that. And Monster Sanctuary just cranks that up to 420. Sorry, I, I didn't even mean that number. I just threw it out. <laughs> it cranks it up to 420,069 with some change. But, yeah, it, like, because not all, like, having skill trees to every monster, there is so many, like, I don't know as the number of builds you can do in that game yeah i would not be able to quantify it there's got to be a finite number between monsters and teams yeah there's got to be a finite number like eventually i settled on a team like because i didn't didn't settle on anything till like late game but i settled on a team that was centered around bleed because i was enjoying that mechanic and also uh centered around aquatic monsters because i kind of have a thing for aquatic life and so, like, I did aquatic creatures with bleed. You can do that niche build. Like, there's so many possibilities in this in that game, and it's also it's also Metroidvania, by the way. If you if you guys haven't played it, it's also Metroidvania. Like, this says everything. This is just I don't know. I don't even know how. Like, inherit is if he if. You had tried to sell me on it by telling me this was this is a Metroidvania monster collecting game with skill trees. I also might not have just believed you because that doesn't sound like those three things could even ever work. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it would, but it is and it does. It works perfectly. I am going to replay this. I plan to, at some point this year, do a randomized Nuzlocke, which those are options in the game, by the way, if you haven't played this. Mm-hmm. This game has an in-game randomizer. It has an in-game Nuzlocke mode. It has so many in-game options for, like, challenge stuff. And I'm going to be doing an in-game ran- or in-game randomized Nuzlocke on stream at some point. And, uh, yeah. Oh, it also has options to make things easier, too. If you... Oh, yeah, it does. It has, it has lots of options to make things easier, too, which is important. Accessibility, I think, is very important, and that's the one thing yeah. that I can give the messenger that it should have had more accessibility. Yeah, that's why I brought it up, because we were just speaking about the messenger. Which is ironic, because Sea of Stars does have that. Yeah, yeah. Sea of Stars has a bunch of super accessibility options. You have to unlock them, but they're not hard to unlock, and... They make the you you can make, trivialize the game if you want. Uh, also, by the way, Mon- Monster Hunter Sanctuary also looks really beautiful, really great pixel graphics. Yeah. Uh, I will say the the one thing is when I was trying to find a background music to play, none of the music really stands out to me, and that's about the only thing I can say about it that wasn't didn't like blow my mind was the music is <laughs> fine. Underwhelming. The music's it fine. It's like atmospheric. Yeah, well, I don't know if you know, but in the options, um, you can uh, put different battle themes because I think even they realize that the battle themes get a little underwhelming. There. I will, one more thing I do want to say, because this is just hilarious, and this is the second time this will have happened that I explained in this stream. I, uh, when I was buying games for the uh, winter Steam sale, I noticed I had Monster Sanctuary in my library on Steam. I bought yeah. this on Switch in front of Inheritance. So at some point in the past, past I did obtain Monster Sanctuary on Steam and didn't even know I had it. So I have it on two platforms. But you know what? It's fine. This game deserves it. Like, honestly, I think I already installed it on my Steam Deck. So It's great. I, I, I replay it very often. Like monthly even if not bi-weekly i mean it's very replayable like i said there's so many builds so Mm -hmm. even if you're not doing a randomizer which also makes it even more endless possibilities but even if you're not doing a randomizer there's so many builds in general so uh you're going through with just the first monsters you found dragon i mean that's perfectly doable with this game 
Yep. The first time, the first monsters you get, you can beat the game with. Yeah, you you can literally anything. Like that's that's the and other it's thing. Not because the game is easy, it's because like you can build your monsters to fit whatever yeah. niche you want them. All monsters are viable thanks to their skill trees. And uh while evolution kind of exists in the game, it's evolution isn't a strictly it makes it stronger. It's a it makes it different. Yeah, yeah, quite different. Like one character what that's a healer will evolve into like a tank and will lose all the healing abilities they had. Yeah, so it doesn't make the previous form obsolete. It just mm-hmm. now fills a different a different niche. It's so cool. And they're making by the way, the creative devs are currently making a uh roguelike that's also yep, a mon- 17. Also a monster collecting game with skill trees so <laughs> yeah but this one's a little different yeah like you said it's a roguelike it's a roguelike it's different but that is interesting to me i hope they eventually revisit monster sanctuary with a sequel Ugh, but tell me about it i'm glad that they're still being creative with with their ideas and i'm still gonna try out whatever they make because they, yeah, know. Like, they wow like me. i said with keeler frequency it's like they, they really do be making uh just whatever game they want it's, it's the best thing about indie devs. Indie devs can be so creative, and yeah. I kind of feel bad for people that are just that refuse to play indie games because there are people like that. Ugh, and yeah. like you miss out on probably some of the best experiences in gaming. So, uh, and of course, of course, uh. No, no, that's not, that's not, not, that's not, that's not. Ah, da, 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 da. I mean, I've already said a lot about Persona 5 Royal. Like, I'm not sure much else for me to say. It's a. It's a shame that I played it the same year as Monster Sanctuary. Monster Sanctuary might have been my game of previous years. But, like, Perso- playing through a game the size of Persona is an event. Especially if you don't have time to, like, put in, like, 12 hours a day. Like, this was just my life for months. This was, this was what I played in all, almost all my free time. Even to ridiculous hours of the night when I was like, I should play something that won't rope me in. And I do this anyways. This was... When, when I'm alone at work, I put on Persona 5 music. Like... <laughs> when I was cooking, I put on Persona 5 music. When I, I, I was... I was having to be careful online because I didn't want to stumble upon spoilers. But like... Yeah. And then the fourth nominee, which I already kind of spoiled, but... <laughs> Uh, Persona Five gets two slots here. Whoa, two! Strikers blew my mind in a very interesting way. I went into it being like, okay, well, I want to play one of the spinoffs, uh, just to just to get some more Persona Five. But like, I went in like, this is a spinoff. This is gonna be like just a little side thing like no this felt like persona 5 2 the gameplay obviously is a musao style i think i said that right (laughs) like a a warrior's game so the gameplay is different but it feels natural it still has uh like the fusion system and stuff still has a lot of the mechanics it's faster paced which i actually kind of preferred the combat uh the menus and ui and everything it's all persona 5 like outside of uh combat and stuff you could show a screenshot from these two different games and people will just assume it's the same game you could tell them it's the same game they believe you uh the music just as solid visuals just as solid story just as solid like 
arguably, I think Stryker's final boss is better than Base 5's final boss in terms of story. Like, there is... I, Striker's another situation. You have to play Royal first. I mean, you don't have to, but you should. Well, not Royal necessarily. You have to play 5 first in some format. Because it does build off that. But... I just can't... Like, it's... It's almost... It's almost unfair that Persona 5 hogged half of the nominations here. But they both were just so good. And, uh... All that being said... I meant to show them in a diff the Forget games in a different much. order. What? Uh, I meant to show the games in a different order, because I meant to... Is it, is it bedtime? What? Uh, I meant to show the, uh, the winner last... But I didn't, so the winner is Persona 5 Royal. I'm not even going to play the music because we just played the music. But yeah, I've said all I want to say about it. I'm not going to I'm not gonna get caught up on it even more. I, I've already praised the game enough, and I, I think we might as well move on to the last category. But I don't, don't mean to be unfair to your time, Persona 5, but you did get a lot of time. Uh, listen, Persona Five knows knows what it's worth. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm assuming it was nominated for awards or something. It had to have been at least base five. I don't know. Anyways, game of the year, final category. Uh, now let me make sure I do this in the actual way I intend this time. Uh, starting with fourth place which is which is not a bad thing it's fourth best game of the year for me out of, out of the games that came out this year uh let me real quickly get the music ready uh oh no add 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 okay well glad the mute volume's down Another ad. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that if you can hear it. I mean, it was kind of obvious. I nominated it for multiple categories. I showed the wrong thing. This is the wrong, this is the wrong thing. Sea of Stars. Where's Sea of Stars? Uh. Oh yeah. Sea of Stars was one that I could have, I could only find one song download. So, uh, Sea of Stars, very, very solid. I've already spoken a lot on it, so I don't know if there's much else I could say, but really good game. Uh, and for an indie game to be the fourth best, I mean, I already said indie games are some of the best experiences, so that's fair but like it's really worth it if you haven't played sea of stars like even if you're not usually a big fan of rpgs you should at least consider it it's kind of it takes out a lot of stuff like grinding that a lot of people don't like about rpgs or about like waiting your your turn not really doing much waiting for your turns and stuff like there's action mechanics to keep it going and there's accessibility options so uh next third place is Pikmin 4. Again, I've talked a lot about it. It's uh but it's really in my opinion the best point of the uh of the series and I didn't think anything would ever beat two but that's because I didn't think they'd bring back things I loved about two and they did and they did it in a way that I guess most people liked even people that didn't like two which surprised me but like I'm glad people finally are appreciating the underground sections or finally appreciating uh the just 
kind of the aesthetic that because it had it had so much from two. It had act, it had a lot of the enemies from two. Uh but it added a lot of new it added new Pikmin types. It added the night missions, which are very unique and felt fun. Dendori missions, which I wasn't as big a fan of, but they're fine. It's really good. I mean, I know not everybody likes real time strategy, but like this is a this is one of those games that I feel is very accessible to people that aren't even fans of the genre, and the sales seem to reflect that because Pikmin Four did really well, uh, despite real time strategy ten tending not to do that well. A lot of people, this was their first Pikmin game. Uh, and now second place uh, Super Mario RPG uh, where, where was where's the music I had for it no I, I, I guess I'm doing the uh, same music again I must have missed that one. Uh, Super Mario RPG. I mean, I already thought I said most of what I had to say about it. It's a, a really great remake. It adds a lot of stuff. It adds post-game content, which is brand new to that, uh, including some really unique bosses that I say are more like puzzles than anything else to figure out how to beat them. Uh, it adds a lot of accessibility with uh, new mechanics that make the game easier music's great graphics great uh the story is the same story it's always been some of the localization i'm not a fan of what they changed but it was minor stuff and i'm glad that this seemed to have done pretty well so far because i'm hoping we get more rpg mario games because since the Mario and Luigi series kind of died, we haven't had any. And I just like those back. But this is a really great game. And I, it is a game that I am definitely going to replay this version because I like to replay the original anyways. And no reason not to just do this one instead now. And final, the winner of my game of the year. Uh, there we go. I know this is probably a controversial pick. I really like Tactica. Yeah, I was kind of on the Persona 5 binge this year, but also I I really like uh, the game I'd compare this most to that I played. It was uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Uh, it's a little loud. Uh, Ki Kingdom Battle was like was a game I really enjoyed. I didn't care for the sequel as much. I they changed too much. I liked this was a similar XCOM style gameplay. Uh, which sure the way to only way that I would like this more if this was more like like a tactic style game than a like XCOM style. If if you know what that means, like. If this is closer to Final Fantasy Tactics, or if you haven't played that, I guess. Fire Emblem. Stella Glow, if you know what that is. <laughs> like, that that kind of cut style of strategy RPG. I would have preferred that, but I still like uh, an XCOM style. I liked how some of the puzzle or the, some of the battles are more puzzle-like. I liked how, kind of how the, I like the gameplay in general. Uh, the music wasn't quite as memorable as the original, as the other games and series that I played so far, but it was still good. The art style was great. The DLC I I recommend getting. R really cool, uh, kind of little side story. Uh, the characters they added were really great. I wish I could talk about them more, but they're kind of spoilery. Uh. But but yeah, I I think uh, it's definitely worth playing. The downside is again, probably gotta play base five first or royal, one of those. But 
yeah, these are just my opinions. Like, at the end of the day, these are my personal game of the year. I know not all of them are the, pop the popular opinions, but I realize Mario doesn't say his title there. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oops. I've, I've tried to do that. That didn't. So yeah, that's my game of the year. Uh, Dragon used to pick me forward your favorite simulation game according to the game board. It was simulation and strategy, right? Didn't they lump them together? Which was really weird. I didn't do simulation. I don't know what I... I don't think I played anything called a sim... That would be categorized simulation this past year. So, uh... Yeah, I hope that, uh, y'all enjoyed this. Uh, do you have any last thoughts, Naredins, about any of your game picks of the year? Um, no, I, I, uh, I appreciate your list. I think, uh, it was very well, uh, thought out, and, uh, I agree with a lot of your choices. Um, I think Persona is just one of those games where it really does... Uh, change who you are fundamentally, like not to be dramatic about games, but if yeah. you're the type of person who's willing to get into it, like Persona is a game that is, you you get out more than what you put in, but you still have to put in. Um, and I think that makes it really special. Like being able to join the community this year was uh, like a really special thing to me, you know, because um. You were able to ex you experience it the first time watching me play it on uh, in yeah. our apartment. You know. Yeah. Uh, for for those that don't know, I, my first exposure to per Persona is a series. My first time I heard of the game series Persona was on when Inheritance and I were living were roommates. We were roommates. <laughs> and, okay, we were roommates. Uh, he asked to borrow my PlayStation Four. Mm -hmm. uh, because Persona 5 was coming out soon and he wanted to play that. I hadn't heard of Persona. I was like, sure, I, don't, I, don't, I like sharing my devices. I like them getting use. Uh, and so then my first time seeing it was bits and pieces of in playing, including a lot of Futaba's arc. I saw most of Futaba's arc. And yeah, and I was immediately interested. I just was perpetually aware this is a hundred plus hour commitment and it was kind of yeah. a where do i slot this in and yeah. well you also at the time were like very insistent on wanting to play them sequentially for some reason did i ever say it with persona because i thought I, it was pretty established <laughs> that one and two were not even the same type well yeah and like at the very least you might have said it a couple times because i because i kept insisting that i remember being like but like I, one and two don't even take place in the, I, I feel mean, like with persona i probably was joking like i don't yeah mostly <laughs> it's hard it's hard to tell with you sometimes because because you like to lean into your bits but i'm sure it was a joke yeah. but like it definitely is like one of those things was like no, like you could always jump into Persona wherever you want and then just go back and play the other ones and you'll catch little like bits from the other ones, but they're not necessary. Yeah, I mean... Like you still have questions about the universe, but like they, it didn't hamper your understanding and your enjoyment of the game that you played, you know? Yeah, and uh, I think also part of it was uh, like the thing that kind of the the straw that the straw that broke the cognitive camel's back <laughs> was uh when it released for switch i now had a way to play it on the go and for a long a long rpg like that that's a massive selling point for me because it's really hard based on how my current lifestyle is it's really hard for me to be able to be in front of a TV or my computer as yeah. much as it take for a game like that. I would have taken like m six months to a year to finish it. Then it already took a few months. Like it would have taken much longer. Uh, and so that was kind of the final thing that I was like, Oh, I'm definitely getting this on switch. And then I asked for it for Christmas because I was kind of, I already was kind of busy with stuff for the year anyways, with stuff that I was planning to play. 
And so I asked for it for Christmas, and basically I had already decided that if I didn't get it for Christmas, I was going to buy it myself, like literally right after Christmas. And, but I got it for Christmas. And so, so yeah, I was it, it was on my radar of a game I wanted to play for a while, but it definitely, I agree, that whole, it does sound like excessive to say the changing your worldview thing, but it kind of does. A lot of the games is about how you view yourself in the world. And it's a lot about how you view others. And there's a lot about uh, not, not the usual law, uh, good versus evil, but law and chaos and what, what, is, what is good. Like what, uh, there's a lot about values. There's just all the characters individually also have their own arcs. There's a lot you can get out of it as a person, which all good stories have that. But I think Persona, from what I've experienced, has that more than average. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. A- any other thoughts, or are you? No, I think that's that's pretty fair. Um, I I wouldn't even be able to start conceptualizing like my my game of the year and stuff like that i i haven't processed it deeply enough but like i do think that tactica is fantastic and i think it, it definitely deserves uh that nomination in that um, yeah and i i will also a little biased there because i kind of felt like i didn't i didn't get to play five or royal or strikers when they came out i didn't get to pick those as my games of the year those times yeah Yeah, yeah. i gave it (laughs) i gave it my game of previous years award but like i didn't get to be a part of that worldwide experience yeah it's like those uh those legacy uh those legacy oscars that they give to like a movie that wasn't particularly great but like uh, the previous movie that they made got snubbed so they're like We'll give it to this one, uh, not because it's necessarily bad and we feel bad, but like because it carries with it the the legacy of the other ones that came before it. Yeah, and I mean, I yeah, I'll fully admit, Tactica wasn't as good as Royal or Strikers, but it's still a game on its own that I would give a ten out of ten. It was still a game; it had the entire kind of essence of it. If if I had gotten into Persona Five years ago, then maybe it would have gotten nominated but not picked by me, because it's just part. It's for me. It's it's probably going to have this weird special place going forward for me. That it like special place in my heart is this is the first Persona game I experienced with the world, like with everybody else, when it was at its most relevant moment. Mm -hmm. And so, which I, there's probably not a lot. There probably is other people, not a lot of people who have that view of Tactica. And so, and at the end of the day, it still kind of had the, it still had the same theming and message. It was still about, uh, rebelling from the status quo. It was still, about whether it's right or wrong to uh, to try to make a change in the world in the way that we think is benefits the world, even though morality can be argued in any way. It still has all those same messages. So I could go on and on about that. Uh, I totally understand not necessarily off the top of your head knowing your game of the year, I wasn't sure yeah. about mine going into this, and even now I'm not necessarily 100 percent sure. I bet like ask me in a couple months, and I might feel like I, it shifted a bit in my memory. Like mm-hmm. we as human beings, I don't think should be held to having the same opinions perpetually. <laughs> That's fair. And it was really hard because last year had a lot of games that I really liked, which. A shame that a lot of them were also just remakes that of games that I didn't think would get remakes, but like, I just in general it was a, it was a good year for gaming for me, and so it was a hard pick for a lot of these awards. 
But I literally but played yeah. Persona 5, really enjoy it. I hope 3 Reload comes to Switch. Yeah, I don't know why Reload is not coming to Switch. There's no logical reason to me why. My only theory I can have is that maybe they just want to release it on the successor, which I think isn't far off. But they can't say that then. Because yeah, it hasn't been yeah, announced. They can't, they can't announce, hey, not released for this one, but you just wait. Yeah, so that's the only theory I can think of. But, like, I could be wrong. I don't know why else they wouldn't put it on Switch. Switch can handle it if it could handle 5 Royal. But uh, that's the only logic. But uh, for now, 3 Reload just doesn't seem like it's coming. It's also not like it's a timed exclusive because it's still going to be multiplat. But I'm definitely going to play it at release. And Inheritance is going to have to deal with hearing all of my opinions. Yeah. Well, I played the original, so unless they like dramatically change the story, I'm sure I'll know what's going on. The story's suddenly the opposite, whatever that means. I, I mean, it could be. It could be. 